Hi guys. Uh, yeah, bit of a nightmare week this week. So uh, I've tried to video the property that we've bought here in Bulgaria uh, at Golovsa. And I've tried about five times. And each time my SD card and the camera has failed. Uh, no idea why, just kept failing and failing. So uh, we'll try again and see if we can get some footage for you this week. I've bought a new SD card and hopefully the camera will hold up well. So we are just outside our house and as you can see at the end of the road we have the beautiful uh, scenery of the mountains that surround us here. Uh, yeah, it'll be a bit of a walk through the grounds and the property. So first of all, I'm really in love with the fact that we've got lots of different fruit trees. So here we've got uh, an almond tree, and that's on our property at the back of the property. Beautiful almond tree, uh, and everywhere over here we have figs. Beautiful figs growing absolutely everywhere. Uh, some of them are ripe now. Our road is a main road. So at this time of year we do get a few cars through, however we are in the height of uh, the tourist season so we also get the, uh, the tourists going through on the jeep safaris. Uh, our grapes are doing well, if anything a little too well. I do need to cut back the grapevines, uh, which I will do sometime this week. So, as you can see we're at number 47. And we're going through the gate. I'm a great vines. Oh, look at the front garden area. I've not done anything with this yet. I've not got the tools uh, to start the gardening. That should happen next week. As you can see, one thing we have been doing is buying lots of stuff, so we have lots of cardboard. <laughs> uh, yeah, the cherries are falling off the tree. We can't pick them quick enough. Uh, this time of year, they're just dying off now but there are still some good ones on there, so we'll try and go through and pick some more. We've been giving the fruit to the neighbours. Uh, Jess did a lovely load of laundry in the sink, the outdoor sink, literally the day before I plumbed in a washing machine. Uh, I've got my hammock up so I can chill out, we get a little bit of sun in this corner throughout the day. It's slightly cloudier day today, a bit cooler, which is nice. into the garden. As you can see I've not really done much yet. Um, I have started to clear out this lean-to building and this will become our summer kitchen. So at the moment what I'm trying to do is just get rid of all the big rocks and level it out the best I can. Try and put a little bit of a slope so just in case there's any rainwater that does come into there once I've put the flooring down it should all drain to the front. Uh, as you can see it's quite a big space and it will be a perfect summer kitchen and seating area to shelter in the shade. Uh, we just need to get on and get the work done. It's been far too hot to do anything. Moving to the rest of the garden. More fruit trees. So we have pear trees. I think this is a pear. We have a more established pear tree over here. I need to pick these because they are starting to fall off the tree which to me means they must be ripe so absolutely beautiful pears completely covered yeah two men are hitting the floor now so they need picking it seems strange that one side of the tree has got glorious fruit on it the other side is still at its infancy but that's what you get over here to the bottom of our garden. This is the bit that's not been touched for quite some time and this would be the vineyard. Lots and lots of grape vines on here. Hundreds and hundreds of grapes. It's a shame because I'm thinking that the grapes will only be ready to pick when we're ready to leave. It's a bit of a shame. So in between the grape vines unfortunately we do have some uh, hogweed to contend with but I will be taking that out as we go along. Uh, and yeah, trying to look after the grape vines the best I can. If it becomes too much, we'll have to take some of the vines out. But the fruit is 
amazing. So, we have these beautiful golden plums, as you can see at the back. Lots of golden plums. More figs. Plenty of figs here. Not too sure what these are, guys. So, they've been a little berry, quite a while. Uh, anybody that knows on YouTube, please drop a comment below and let me know what they are, because I'm not too sure, I've not picked any yet. Uh, but they look like they're ready to be picked. And these are my favorite. These plums, absolutely gorgeous. I've been eating these. Pick them when they're ripe. Absolutely beautiful plums. Lots more of these little berries. And I have another plum tree down here. Uh, a cherry plum. Again, I can't tell you how good these plums are. In fact, I'm going to come and take the rest of these off afterwards. These weren't quite ripe enough last week. I'm going to come and take them off. So, yes, yeah, so, anyway, getting to the building. The bit you're probably more interested in. So, we had an issue when we bought the house. And the issue was this outbuilding. So, unfortunately, it's uh, an illegal building. It was not done with planning permission, which is a bit vague over here anyway uh, but as you can see by the state of it it's pretty much falling down now it looks to have been a wood store and a little bit of a gardener's shed is the best way to uh, describe it uh, but it's absolutely knackered it's falling down the timbers have rotted through the roof needs to come down to make it safe uh, to be to be fair, it all needs to come down. The brickwork is just all over the place. It's a demolition job. Now the owners were trying to offer to make it legal, to make it right, which would have taken about nine months, which we weren't willing to wait. And we were also made aware that if they did make it a legal building then we would have ended up paying a lot more for the property than we did. So we've decided to uh, not bother, we'll take it down and should we want to put something on the spot in the future then we just apply for planning permission as normal. And the driveway, now I've got quite a few old windows and doors here that need to get rid of, they will go slowly. It just takes a little time and back onto the house. So we're very lucky that the uh, the previous owners here had had UB, UPVC, I can say it correctly, double glazed units put in. Now not everywhere, but our side entrance door is a modern door. Uh, the conservatory area isn't, that all needs looking after. I need to sort out all the timbers and possibly repel, replace one or two of the panes. But that's not too difficult. We have more new windows here with fly screens on just uh, cleaned them all up the other day and all the extension is all modern double glazed units and we have a Toby hi Toby yeah having a good time More beautiful roses that need cutting back as they're all getting a bit uh, over now that's a job later on and uh, I I pulled the Petschka out. Huh. Speaking of the tourists, the tourists are going past in the uh, gold cabs. <laughs> Obviously this only happens in, uh, in the height of the season. Don't get that out of season. So yeah, we brought the Petschka outside, just mainly so I could cook on it. Which is quite nice to be able to sit in the garden and cook a meal. Now, onto the inside. You'll see that not much has changed. Hey, Toby. There he goes. So, we've kept the kitchen as it is for now. The main difference is that we needed some mod cottons. So, we invested in a fridge freezer and a washing machine to make life a little bit easier. 
So that was easy, that was done online. We found an absolutely brilliant place. Order everything online and they ship it out to you. Let's take my shoes off. Hey, uh. So, excuse it being a little untidy, but we're not that organized yet. Well, this is gonna be our kitchen. The plan is to put the kitchen units down that side. Um, almost have the window there like a, a bit of, of an old-fashioned serving hatch, if you like. So we'll have utility room where the existing kitchen is and kitchen units. We'll be getting rid of the table and having a little island in the middle with a breakfast bar for the boys. Right, through the doors. So this is going into the coolest part of the house. Uh, no windows in here, so it keeps nice and cool. This would originally been like a pantry, storage for the kitchen, and to be honest, probably will end up being a pantry again. As you can see, we've not touched anything. It's been too hot to even contend with dealing with any of the cracks in the plaster and filling them and painting. We've just not done anything. We've, we've literally been flaked out every day in the sun. Uh, coming through to the bathroom. We invested in a little tub as a baby bath because uh, Toby wasn't too keen on the shower, so he has a baby bath. Again, a room that we've not really yet looked into is our shed space. Not done anything with this yet. Flip the light on so you can see. Uh, this is where the boiler is. Boiler and shed space. I will get on with this at some stage. But, uh, yeah, everything takes time over here. Hey, Cody. Walking around with your undies on. Is it hot? Yeah. So, this has become our living room. Again, it's another cool room. It's in the centre of the house which is really important for keeping it cool. Uh, and our, another little investment, we've got internet and TV put in, uh, mainly for the boys. Obviously internet's perfect for us, for doing the YouTube stuff, but uh, the boys definitely need it. And this is our temporary situation with the bedroom. So we're all sleeping in the same room, but the main reason for that is purely because we only have one fan currently so <laughs> as you can imagine it does get quite hot here at night so having one fan means we're all in the same room and we are still on air beds at the moment until we put another order in however we have managed to save one of the beds that was left a uh, little traditional bed way too short for the likes of me and jess but perfect for cody so this will be cody's room and Cody's wonderful view out of his bedroom window of his massive garden. Uh, sorry about the mess, we're literally living out of suitcases, but that's just what we have to do until we've got some wardrobe space. Back into our bedroom. And the two rooms we've not managed to get around to doing anything with yet is the third bedroom space which currently has the old-fashioned bed settee in it. Now that's going to be going outside as part of my summer kitchen. Uh, and we've not even managed to take down the old wardrobe or anything yet. But this is, uh, this is the next space we need to work on. And just get it cleaned up and mopped and sorted. That'll happen. Yeah, won't it? And the last room that we've not yet contended with, or done anything with yet, is our little conservatory. Lean-to, potting room, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, so at the moment it's a dumping ground, so there's quite a few rugs and, and things that we're getting rid of. Uh, we found some absolutely beautiful retro lampshades and light shades. Uh, not really our taste, however, too good to get rid of, so we will be putting them up for sale on the buy sell swap pages. Uh, yeah. So this is another room that needs a bit of attention, but we will get there in the end. And finally, as you saw from the outside, our back door, which leads straight into the shade of our beautiful cherry tree. So yeah, 
We're getting there slowly guys, it's just taking a little bit longer than we thought. But at the end of the day, the boys are happy. Uh, I'm more than happy, I absolutely love it over here. But I will admit, I wish we'd sort of bought the house earlier and been able to get out here a little bit earlier in the year because it's so hot. I can't tell you, even at even evening, 8, 9 o'clock at evening, it's high 20s, 28, 29 degrees in the shade. So during the day you're in mid 30s and the only thing you feel like doing is going to the bar, having a drink and having a dip in the sea. But uh, it's all becoming, it's all becoming. Anyway, like I said, the boys are doing well. Jess is getting used to the heat slowly and uh, yeah, life's good. Right, catch you all soon guys. Bye bye for now. Ciao, ciao. As you can see behind me, we are well into the height of summer season. And uh, yeah, busy beach. Uh, we don't normally come on the beach here because it's too near Flower Street for our liking. Uh, but we wanted a quick dip in the sea. So uh, why not? The kids are loving it. I'm loving it. Uh, I prefer being further down towards Nezibar, a bit quieter down there. Uh, but yeah, life's good. Life's a beach. Can't complain. Uh, but as you can see, absolutely rammed. Benidorm, eat your heart out. It's all about sunny beach, Bulgaria. Well, good morning, guys. Dobro utro. Uh, yeah, three weeks in Bulgaria now. Uh, well, almost after this weekend. We have full three weeks in Bulgaria. And yeah. Been good, been interesting. So what I want to do now is something that I promised I'd do on my last video, and that's go through some of the costings and the financial side of buying a property over here in Bulgaria. So as you'll already be aware, I did give you an idea of the costings of setting up a limited company here, uh, and it wasn't expensive. I mean, it, it, you know, I keep referring to about 200 pounds, but to be fair, it was it was less than that. You know, it, it wasn't expensive at all. We used the right people, uh, and that seems to be the key: is using the right people for the right job. So let's move on to the house. Now, I think it's a little unfair to divulge exactly how much the house has cost us, uh, mainly because I wouldn't want to put people off purchasing properties at different prices over here. Um, obviously, we didn't pay the uh, the sort of like lowest amount that you can. We didn't we didn't go for a five thousand pound house. We know people that have. We know people that have done well buying cheap rural properties. We also know people that have bought cheap rural properties and been in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere, uh, and struggled. Not just because there's no infrastructure and no shopping and, and anything like that, but they've struggled because they couldn't get building supplies they needed, uh, the, the original £5,000 property was half falling down, they spent another £25,000-£30,000 doing renovation work, sometimes more. Uh, we've also heard horror stories about houses falling down on them uh, and having to literally demolish and, and, and start again. So we didn't want that, we wanted something livable, we wanted something near the coast, we wanted something that was best of both worlds. So we have the tourist side on one side and we have the village life on the other. Um, if you're wondering what the noise is, we've got a little boy that's up here. So he's just having his breakfast. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's why there's noise in the background. Uh, it's Toby. So, the costings. I've got it all written down here. So basically, um, after setting up the business and coming back over, we had the uh, estate agent. Now, Pat was very honest with me right from word go. He said it doesn't matter whether you're buying a £500,000 property or a £5,000 property, he has the same commission as an estate agent for all properties, and that's €1,000. So that's £860. Now, as far as estate agents' fees go, some people might turn around and say that's expensive, uh, but I'll be honest, we would not have this property but for Pat and Manel. They have found 
a property that hit all our requirements, uh, perfect area, they've done so well for us. So for me, 860 quid, well worth paying, uh, paying that fee, 100%. So on top of that, we also had other expense fees. Uh, we had the state tax, the notary fees, um, the property registry fee, the uh, execution of the purchase of the contracts um, fee, and all those fees, which were quite, you know, quite substantial work, came to um, around one thousand four hundred and twenty pounds. So quite a few fees that are on top of your purchase price. Uh, and then we had a couple of other smaller fees at the end of the transaction, which was the lawyer's fees um, and a small bank transfer fee. But again, we were only looking at about £425, and that's for all the lawyer's fees uh, for the purchase of property uh, and bank transfer fees for sending the money over. So, you know, not a huge amount. Um, and then finally, one thing that we did mainly to make life easier on ourselves, and we were advised to do this by our estate agent, was uh, give the attorney at law, or the lawyer, whatever you want to call them, uh, to give the power of attorney. Now, the reason for this is it avoided us having to travel around and have visits uh, with the previous owners of the property, and, you know, justify a signature on a few pieces of paper. So we did that. We give the power of attorney over, which cost, um, it cost a fee to go to the notary to do the power of attorney, and it also cost for a translator to, to be there to do it. Uh, but all in all, it came to 194 lev, uh, which is about 83 pounds. So it was, again, it was a bit of a gamble. You know, I could have saved that 83 pounds, but I would have made my life a lot more difficult so given the power of attorney, best thing I could do. So yeah, so all in all, you know, you look at property prices back at home in England, you look at the fees involved in buying and selling properties, both with your legal costs um, and estate agent fees and all the other bits and bobs that go along with it, and it's going to cost you a damn sight more than it is over here in Bulgaria. So it's not mega expensive. Um, Overall, I mean, looking at my my final fees, we ended up probably about twelve hundred pounds over our original plan budget for the property, um, and that's just with the extra fees and everything else. So, you know, not not too much of a worry, not too much of a problem, um, and like I said, happy to pay it. So, as you can see behind me, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful morning out there. Uh, and I'm hoping to get a little bit more work done in the garden this morning and then go and meet some friends uh, in the next village down in Orizari. Uh, I want to go and meet some friends down there for a beer this afternoon and then off into Sunny Beach later for an evening meal and uh, hopefully some more drinks and some fun. So, yeah, great life. See you later, guys.